Hello, hello. I wanted to share a quick little trick I have just figured out for making your text have character styles that are dynamically generated by your spreadsheets in InDesign. Let's dig in. So to give you some background on what this game is, this is a prototype that I made a while back where you're orbiting around different uh, planets, either uh, Earth or Mars or the Moon, which I know isn't technically a planet, but let's go with it just for now. Uh, but you're orbiting around and you're collecting junk and you're delivering it to different locations on uh, Earth, the Moon or Mars, different cities. Uh, and what I wanted was the cities to be color coded based on what world they were on. So red for Mars. Uh, black for the moon and blue for earth. And so I set up, uh, before I knew any better, I set up three separate text fields that uh, you can see here highlighted. Um, and I'm gonna expand them here just so you can see what they actually look like. Uh, and under, they're all overlaid on top of each other. It's, it's really complicated here and, and, and probably unnecessarily so, but it was the only way I knew how to do it at the time. Uh, basically I had a, a separate text variable for each city uh, that was based on which world it was on. Uh, and I applied a swatch uh, to the text in each of those fields uh, based on where I wanted the destination to be. Uh, and this is what the spreadsheet ended up looking like, which is not good. It's not really what I wanted to make. It made development really complicated because uh, say I wanted to sort everything by alphabetical order, uh, for example, it would break up things by earth. It was, a, it was complicated. Anyway, it's not good. Um, and if I handed this off to the publisher and they had to go into production with something like this, it would be needlessly complicated. And I wanted to find a solution that was much more concise. So uh, this is the old and busted spreadsheet. This is the new hotness. This is what I wanted. This is a single column that has all of the cities on it and a single destination column that has all of the worlds on it, either Earth or Mars or Moon. Uh, there's also Starter here, which is a special case, which um, is not really a destination, but it's just there. It's just, just another category. Uh, so this is what I wanted. This is the spreadsheet that I think I could work with much more easily and hand off uh, more confidently to a publisher. Uh, so. This is how I am able to take this spreadsheet and actually make it work doing the same thing in the layout that I wanted to do with the old and busted spreadsheet. So I've connected the new hotness spreadsheet uh, to my old InDesign file uh, and replaced all of the old placeholders that referred to different destinations with just this one destination placeholder. And just to test it out, I'm previewing it here so you can see what the, what happens. So. Uh, as I toggle through tiles uh, in the preview, uh, you can see that destination will just drop in whatever I've got in the destination column on that row. Uh, you've all seen this before if you've seen my previous uh, data merge videos. This is all old hand right now. So you can see Earth and Delhi uh, because I've got the destination and city placeholders here. Pretty simple so far. Uh, what is the goal? What, what am I trying to do here? Well, uh, what I want to do is uh, place the destination on both sides of the city. I want to copy the destination uh, placeholder and paste it on both sides of the city placeholder to result in something like this, uh, Earth NYC Earth, uh, or Earth Cairo Earth, that sort of thing. Uh, why am I doing this? What, what is the goal here? Well, uh, what I want to do is take the destination uh, text string and use them as if they were HTML tags. Uh, basically telling InDesign that if you see any text that is between Earth and Earth, I want you first to remove Earth. I don't want to see it. Uh, and in that case, I'm going to be using the invisible character style to do that. Um, and then on top of that, I want to make a new character style and apply it to whatever is in between Earth and Earth and change its color to be blue. Uh, now, first things first, I got to figure out uh, how to make Earth disappear, as the mad scientist may say. Um, I also want to make sure that the tags like starter and stuff disappear as well. Uh, basically, anything that appears in the destination column, uh, I do want that text in the text field, but I don't want to see it. Um, I will make a paragraph style that is specifically applied to uh, the, the city names here. I'm going to call it city header. And in the grep panel, I'm going to apply the invisible character style to any instance of that dash starter or Mars or Earth or 
moon. Uh, that's what those bars are, it's just or. So you can see it works here uh, in the previews. I'm just toggling through here uh, real quick. Let's uh, skip ahead to a few other tiles just so you can see. Uh, okay, so Mexico City is, st is still there, uh, but all the Earth uh, destination uh, flanking tags have been removed. Uh, just so you can see what this looks like, I'm going to make a new text field and remove all of the uh, paragraph styles just so you can see what uh, things are looking like in real text. Um, so you can see this is the exact same set of variables that I have on the tile, but I'm just setting them aside here uh, for ease of reference so you can follow along with what exactly is going on here. So my goal with this is to tell InDesign that any text that is flanked by uh, Earth and Earth or Mars and Mars is going to have a particular set of uh, swatches or colors applied to it. To do that, I'm going to use an old handy grep string that I have saved in a sticky because I use it so frequently. I'm just going to copy paste it and bring it into, uh, into the grep panel of this uh, paragraph style. Uh, I, I use this thing a lot and I find it really handy and it's very easy to replace uh, certain things, uh, certain parts of it with just new words. So let's go back to our city header paragraph style and back to the grep panel and start adding new grep styles here. Uh, what am I going to apply this to? Well, uh, first off, uh, I will paste that string and I will replace the old HTML tags that I had there with the new terms that I want to apply. Uh, in this case, let's just call it Mars. And uh, in the second case, I'm just going to call it Mars again. Uh, and this grep string will just apply whatever character style I make to any uh, anything that's flanked by Mars and Mars. Uh, I'll call this character style Mars, just for ease of reference. And the only thing I'm doing is applying the red swatch to the text. And already, because the previews turned on, uh, you can see that it's actually already working, which is fantastic. Uh, toggling a little bit uh, through the deck, you can see that it's not applying any of this style to uh, text that is flanked by Earth and Earth, uh, which is good. I didn't, in, I didn't want to do that. Uh, but now it's time to make uh, new grep styles that apply to Earth because I think this is a proof of concept and I think we've uh, shown that it will, it will work. So let's go back to the city header paragraph style and make that new grep style in there. Back in the grep panel, making a new grep style, making a new character style, calling that Earth. Same process as before, just applying a blue swatch to that text. Uh, and copy pasting that grep string here. Uh, again, this time replacing those uh, flanking tags with Earth uh, instead of uh, Mars in this case. All set, I think. Uh, so let's try this out. Let's see how this looks. Hmm, uh, looks like it's not applying uh, the character style that I wanted. Uh, let me double check uh, in the grep string and make sure that I haven't made a typo in this string. Oh, yep. Yep, sure does. Uh, I accidentally left that opening bracket there. So let me remove that and see what happens here. Okay, and oh, wow, gosh, already. Uh, what I like is the fast response in the previews uh, to show you when you're doing something right. Uh, so uh, the earth uh, grep string is working correctly. Uh, all of the text that is flanked by uh, the text text string Earth uh, is having a blue swatch applied to it, which is fantastic. Uh, so all things good. Um, with that established, I can uh, start applying new character styles for the moon destinations, for example. Uh, let's give that a shot. Skipping ahead to one of the moon tiles towards the end of the spreadsheet here, uh, we have Plunk. Plank? Plunk. Let's call it Plank right now. Yeah, sure. So uh, same process as before. Uh, this uh, should be pretty familiar by now. Uh, you go to the city header paragraph style uh, and you start uh, making new grep styles in the grep panel. Uh, in this case, it will be specifically applied to any instance of text that has uh, moon and moon on either side of it. Uh, so making a new uh, moon uh, character style, uh, all I'm doing is making it gray. So it's going to have a black swatch with a tint of about 60%. Um, and I'm dropping in that same grep string that I had before, uh, changing the variables as needed, uh, making sure that I don't have a typo again uh, in this case. But uh, I think that's a, that, that, was an, that was an easy fix, thankfully. And hey, there you go. There's the moon character style. Uh, so this is a quick and easy way that uh, would be very handy for me to set up things for development.
So for example, if I wanted to color code these numbers, I don't have to attach any extra weird text or make new uh, overlapping text variables in this text field. I can just have one column that has numbers uh, and it will automatically be updated to whatever a character style can do, whether it's applying gradient fills or just plain old flat uh, uh, color fills or strokes or what have you, fonts, that sort of thing. Uh, underlines even. Uh, there's, there's a world of possibilities with this method and uh, I, I am really, really excited to see what happens with it. Hopefully you find it useful too. Thanks very much. Hello, hello. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to download more stuff and more content, uh, you can find it over in the Patreon at the link below. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye.